Today, you can watch me feed about 15 jumping spiders, and these are Pitipus regis, regal jumping spiders. They are juveniles. I'm going to talk about their behavior and um, as I feed them, so let's go take care of that. Ooh. <laughs> My cousin recently asked me what it's like feeding jumping spiders. She's interested in having a Phytopus regis as a pet and she has a concern that when she tries to feed them they might run away. So I made this video to demonstrate that feeding them is a lot mellower experience than what someone would imagine. I told her that I would make a video showing her how I feed these baby or juvenile jumping spiders. I've been keeping them for about two years now um, and this is the second batch that I have bred from a separate mother. Um, so here you can see a little, a little juvenile that I am <clears throat> working with and it's not like they're just going to jump away and run off um, some of them, of course, have different personalities and different preferences for what they eat, how they eat it. Some of them want their prey to move around and they want to catch it themselves. And then others are fine if I just hand them their mealworm and they just take it gently. And these guys did grow up feeding on flightless fruit flies when they were really small. When they first hatched in the sack, they were still in with mom for a while. And then after they started growing and spreading out on their own and making their own little um, molting sacks, I started separating them because sometimes they can be cannibalistic. So now what we're going to see here is an example of one that's hesitant and doesn't want to just eat this mealworm that isn't moving. So you'll see that I'm going to try to move it and coax it along and it just isn't interested in this one. Um, and I would say that one thing about feeding your jumping spiders, you do need to have some patience because, you know, they might not take the food right away and it depends really on what you're feeding them. I would say, you know, maybe a small cricket or... <clears throat> something like that they could chase they may they may find that to be a little more entertaining than just being handed a mealworm and so you can see this one still isn't uh, isn't too interested now these Phytopus regis are from the southern United States um, but you can't find them in the north, uh, you may find the Phytopus audix, the bold jumping spider, if you're in the north northern states where, you know, it snows and gets colder. Although, around here in Washington, I mean, eastern Washington state, I don't really, I don't really see them around too much. Um, and I did know that at a, at a local pet store, someone had brought in a male. Phytopus audix and they brought it in because they wanted it identified and they didn't know what it was. So that tells you just certain areas they may be abundant and others you may never see them. So there you see this little guy was fine catching, catching his own worm that was moving. <clears throat> and another thing is they don't, they don't tend to really get in the way when you go to close their, um, enclosures back up. They do like to to uh, nest toward the, the lid. So one way that you can remedy this if you're worried that you're going to squish one of them is to turn it, turn your cup or your enclosure upside down and actually, you know, make make the, the bottom part where they will set up their their little nests. Now I put substrate in here. Of course, you don't have to, you know, you could, you could put 
you know, a paper towel on the bottom, something like that. <clears throat> you can also keep them in enclosures that are sold commercially. So I spray down their enclosures a little bit and they drink from those water droplets. The only time that I've really had to be careful with that is when they're just little babies because they're just little tiny spiderling specks, like smaller than a pinhead and they can get caught up in those water dr droplets and drown. But when they get older like this, I spray down, you know, close to them and where they are physically, and sometimes I even spray on their molting sack, and they'll drink through it, you know, because molting, you know, is a <clears throat> process that takes a lot of energy from them, so sometimes they get thirsty when they're in there, and it's okay to spray a little bit of water on that. I mean, you would never want to saturate it and cause them to drown, of course, but they will drink through their molting sack. So here's one that <clears throat> has decided to try to run away. And the running away is not, uh, is not a serious attempt, you can see. So I'm just carefully nudging her back over the lip of her enclosure to offer her a mealworm. These are actually small mealworms. They're not, um, they're not regular size because these little ones are still juveniles. See, she's going to take it very gently there. Sometimes their little pedipalps will start moving up and down um, <clears throat> rapidly right before they grab their prey or take it from my tongs. Some people might ask me, you know, have you ever been bitten by one? And the answer to that is no, I have never been bitten by one. Although sometimes when they're nervous, you know, the adults <clears throat> have spread their fangs out, you know, at, uh, at some of the food that I've offered them. And you can see them do that, you know, though <clears throat> their, their fangs are different from tarantulas. They, they spread their fangs out, you know, and sideways, like they have more motion. And you'll sometimes see that little flash of green or purple iridescent on their chelicerae when they do that. And as you can see, they will also take prey that is very large in proportion to their own physical size. They are pretty ferocious eaters and it is a lot of fun to watch them hunt. So you don't have to feed them the way that I'm doing here. I'm just doing this out of convenience. I want them to get a big, nice, nourishing meal. And I happen to have a mealworm farm. And I think the mealworms are a little easier for them at their size, you know, to eat. As opposed to giving them some small dubias. So this one is not showing much interest in the food. Um... So here's my me attempting to give it one that might move a little bit more since we're not having an, an easy take. The little guy's gonna leave. So I'm corralling him so that he'll stay. Oh, and see, I didn't give up, and you can see that he was hungry, so um, that's why I say with jumping spiders, it's important to be patient with them, because they may not take their prey right away. They may just be kind of thinking, what's going on here? Um, they don't really realize it might just be a lot for them, and they're kind of scared at first. <clears throat> I mean, I would feel scared if someone just lifted my enclosure lid off, and there I was in space, not knowing where I was. And these little jumpers, you can tell when they get to be a certain size, whether they're male or female, because they're coloring. The black ones are males, and, and the brown and tan and cream ones are female. I did have someone ask me this question quite a few months ago, and I didn't know how to answer it at the time, because I wasn't sure. But now I've had this whole batch that um, are being reared into adulthood and they're definitely showing some of their adult colors before they've matured. 
So in case you're wondering, I do, I do have jumping spiders for sale right now. I have about 29 of them. So if you are interested in them, uh, I would suggest going over to Instagram or going to Facebook and looking up Tarantulas with Shanti and send me a uh, message. Uh, I charge shipping handling and then um, for each jumper, um, we can talk about that. Uh, it, and it'll depend on where you live and what the weather is, what, you know, whether or not I can, when I can send them out, but I do overnight um, with a heat pack when it's, when it's co cooler weather. So yeah, if, if you're interested in having one of these babies, then we could probably arrange that. Uh, I have plenty to choose from. After this round of, of jumpers, I probably won't raise any more. Um, I, I don't know, I, I'm finding it um, difficult to place them in homes and maybe it's because, you know, the, the, the fee for, for shipping is so expensive for only one jumper, so I would also uh, sell them in bulk if, if someone is interested in several. That's probably the best way to go. I know during the winter time they seem to become pretty scarce to find. And then just keep in mind that, that I'm posting this in the fall, um, in November of 2020. So if it's a later, I may not have these little guys anymore. Um, my main focus is tarantulas and those are what I primarily breed. So. And jumping spiders, they, they don't have the longest lives. I mean, they live a year or two. Um, it really depends um, how you care for them, whether they're male or female. The males tend to really slow down and lose their appetites toward the end of their lives. Here's trying to get this little one to eat. Sometimes they just don't take it. There have been a couple during this feeding video that just didn't take it. I think I might have cut some clips out because they just weren't hungry. And when they're inside of their little sacks and they won't come out, it means they're molting. So they're not, they're not usually hungry, but sometimes I'll try to poke some prey into one side and they might take it. And as you can see, this one ended up taking their prey in the end. And in all the time that I've raised these guys, I think that I accidentally, I accidentally killed one or two tiny of the tiniest little babies. Um, and I don't quite remember how that happened. It could have had something to do with the lid um, on the little cups I was using at the time, but now that I leave them all with their mom and don't separate them out so early, which was a mistake, they, um, it's, you know, they, they, they don't, they don't really get in the way and I can see them better. So there is not that margin, that large margin of error anymore. So I haven't, I haven't accidentally killed any since, so it's probably been a year, over a year now. I'm very thankful for that because it was kind of, it was heartbreaking. Poor little guys. Uh, here's a little female. Taking out her old uh, dried up worm that she had probably didn't eat it because you can see her little sack over there. She probably had recently molted and so now she's probably hungry. And like I said, sometimes when they're molting, they're not hungry, so you have to wait till after they molt and after they their um, exoskeleton is hardened enough that they can use their fangs. And so there she is. She just grabbed her food. She's like, fine, thanks. I'll take that. I'm happy to have this. Their feedings usually go very well, uneventful, and I don't know, 
maybe once or twice every few months there might be one that tries to run away. I did have one adult female who was really skittish and she took off across the kitchen table one time, but it wasn't hard to catch her. <laughs> yes, I jumped, even though I knew what to expect. 